Okay, as always, so the set of 3D glasses, even though these aren't the ones I used, I recycled them. <clears throat> I did see Man of Steel IMAX 3D. Wow. I'll begin by saying this. If you get nothing, out of, nothing else out of this, there is no scene after the credits. When the credits begin to roll, you can leave. There's nothing. There's no mid credit scene. There's no end credit scene. <clears throat> this one you begin with, the destruction of Krypton. So you actually get the background story of the birth of Kal-El, about Jor-El, Laura-El, or Lara-El. You find out everything you need to know about Zod. Decent amount about the ruling council. So you get a decent background on Krypton while it's being destroyed. Because first you have the military coup by Zod, and then you have the actual destruction of Krypton. They actually skip the traditional origin story. You know, you don't see, you only see Clark growing up sequentially. You know, they'll, they'll have a scene where he's, he's taking care of something. There's a, a problem on an oil rig. If you've seen the trailers, you've seen the scene where he's essentially holding part of an oil rig up so people can escape. He falls into the water, and then it reminds him of another time when he was younger. Which ends up being the, the bus accident, where he pushes the bus out of the water. So you get a lot more in the current time where he's trying to figure out what his worst place is in, in society, just in general. He's doing lots of bizarre odds and ends job, whether it's playing like he's on Deadly Catch, doing a little bit of getting a just desserts on an ice road trucker. You know, he's trying to figure out where he fits in. And you're probably thinking, but he had this, the, uh, the Earth upbringing, he should be really acclimated to things. No. He's really not. They show moments where his powers are first manifesting. He does not know what to do. So he's kind of an outsider because he's the weird kid in school. And as he grows up, he ends up being the, the weird teenager. And then they show him another times, and he's kind of the weird adult who doesn't have a true spot where he just truly fits in it. Until he ends up finding an old Kryptonian ship. Takes a little key that he's been carrying around with him and gets to actually talk to his father, who gives him the background story on him, what he's about, tries to help fill in some of the gaps. This is the time when Zod shows up. <clears throat> and now you have, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Zod wants Kal El return to him. Does he turn himself over? You know, and thinking that, you know, if Zod is if Zod is correct, he'll surrender and Zod will leave. Or he has a cri the crisis where it's do I trust Zod, do I trust the humans? Since he's trying to be the person of both worlds, but he can only really belong to one. So you're probably thinking, there really isn't a lot of lightheartedness. This movie isn't just an almost nonstop epic. Some of the complaints of this movie is just too big. Yes, it is destruction of one world, the potential destruction of another world. So his home world's gone, and his adopted world could easily be destroyed at the same time. And it has that really, truly massive feel. The Avengers pretty much seemed like New York was in trouble. In this one, it feels like the world is in trouble. You know, they do a lot of battling when it comes to Metropolis. And the fight scene was in this are absolutely ridiculous. The ending battle between Superman, which they finally call him that by like the last half an hour of the movie, and Zod is an absolutely amazing fight. You know, they destroy a lot of buildings. And they actually show that this is how you can use super speed in a movie with super strength. The heat vision they do a really good job with too. They don't do the frost breath which I'm fine with, because he's burnt every other ability that he's got. Just really, really beautifully done, epically filmed. You know, one of the places that doesn't feel lighthearted at all. Well, he is really not Clark Kent. He's trying to figure out who he is. He doesn't become Clark Kent until pretty much the very, very end of the movie, when he becomes the, the, the traditional character everyone expected him to be. This is more or less him trying to figure out how he as an alien fits in 
and the human society. I can safely say this was probably one of the best superhero movies, period. It's actually a really solid movie. It is, it is grand in scope. Tremendously grand. It is epic when it comes to fight sequences, when it comes to story, when it comes to the score. People have actual character development. You know why the enemy is doing what he's doing. You know why jor did what he did. You know what Zod's doing. You know why kal feels the way that he feels. The interplay between Superman and Lois Lane actually works. You know, the suit looks really good. And they actually do a good job. And there are some lighthearted spots here and there. You know, don't expect for a lot, a lot of jokes. Or a lot of, you know, bizarre, trying to use my power sort of weird humor you've got like in Smallville. Yeah, that's not here. This is a, a serious superhero movie. I can safely say, after having watched this, if they can keep that going for a couple other movies, the amount of action they had in this one will be really, really tough to top in a Justice League movie.